It's a new show on Sports Card Investor where we're breaking down some of the biggest trades in the sports card hobby and debating who won. Hello, sports card investors, and let's get ready to debate because Teapot, we have over $300,000 worth of massive trades that happened over the last 30 days that we're about to break down and debate who won right now. Are you ready for this? There's some big money and you and I like to disagree. So we do like it. to disagree. We're gonna let the audience decide who won. And this is a brand new show that's brought to you by Veriswap. Veriswap is the ultimate online place to conduct trades safely. They help administer the trade for you so you can make sure that you are getting the cards and the money that you think you are supposed to get as part of that trade. And Veriswap has pulled for us 10 of the biggest trades that have happened over the last 30 days on Veriswap's platform, over $300,000 that we are gonna get into right now. By the way, if you haven't tried Veriswap yet, register at veriswap.com, promo code SCI, gets you $15 off your first trade. Make sure to use promo code SCI. All right, T-Bot, you ready to get started with the first one? Yes, sir, let's do it. Okay, here we go. We are going to go to Raymond, the founder of Veriswap, and he's gonna introduce the first trade for us. For this first trade, we have a $65,000 Brady trade. So on one side, we have a 2000 Brady Contenders Auto and a Brady Bowman Chrome Refractor in BGS 8.5 Iconic Rookie Card uh, in exchange for a Brady Bowman Gold BGS 8.5 numbered out of 99, as well as $10,000 in cash. What do you guys think? All right, Teapot, we're starting with a trade of some big Brady cards plus a little bit of cash. Now, before we break this down, the values that you're gonna hear Raymond say in this show, those are the trade values of these cards that were specified by the people who did the trade. Yeah. They don't always align with the cash values of the card. Sometimes last comps are lower than the trade values you're gonna hear, but these were huge cards nonetheless, big time cards. Help me break this down and tell me who you think won. When you're talking about Bowman, Bowman Chrome uh, rookie cards for Brady, those are some of the most iconic football you know, cards of yes. all time. So this is a really interesting one. For the refractor, it actually to me looks much nicer visibly and visually than it than the gold, which is by the way numbered to 99. That's right. numbered to 99. In contrast, you've got 426 of these Bowman Chrome refractors for Brady total across all the grading companies, all grades that have been put into, into cases. So definitely more rare on the gold in spite of the visual appeal not necessarily being there. And then this other card, uh, this which presumably is like a dual auto of Mark Bulger and Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that dual auto can bring the card value down, right? If it's the wrong athlete. This is sort of the conundrum of early du dual and triple auto cards versus later. If all the players work out, it can work to your advantage. In this case, this is an interesting one because you're getting cash. I like the rarity of the 99. I like having $10,000 in cash to go play with. Both of these kind of work out to equal value if you stack them up. Although I think I'd lean more on the side of the person who got the gold numbered to 99, just a more rare card overall and a little bit of cash. What about you? Well, in terms of the gold versus the refractor, even though there's a lot more of those Tom Brady Bowman Chrome refractors out there, the market sees that as the more valuable card. The reason why is because the gold, even though it's numbered to 99, that was from Bowman. Yeah. Not from Bowman Chrome. That's right. And as we know, as we, you know, look at modern day baseball, even cards that are coming out of tops are not as valuable as cards that are coming out of tops Chrome. Yep. The same has been true for years. Chrome is considered the better set. So even though the Bowman Chrome refractor is a lot more common, as you said, there are over 400 of those have been graded. Yep. While we know that the Bowman Gold, there's only 99 of them that were ever created, um, that it's still more desirable. And it's actually worth more. It's yeah. actually worth a little bit more. So all things being equal, I would rather have that refractor rather than the gold out of 99, even though it's more common. It's also a little more valuable. But in this trade, I definitely feel like I would rather have the gold out of 99 plus the cash. I agree with you on this. Yeah because it's $10,000 in cash yeah. and cash is king. That allows you to go get some other card you really, really want. That was so much cash to add into this deal that I think that became the clear winner in this deal. If it was only $5,000 worth of cash, I might've gone with a refractor, but $10,000 worth of cash to me, that 10,000 plus the gold out of 99, we got a clear winner. Yeah, that's how I am. I, I think you could go out and find some really nice Tom Brady autos for 10K, uh, as opposed to this other one with Mark Bulger. I know it's a rookie card too, 
but I like that cash and that's what put it over the top for me. I like it. All right, guys, let's go to card number two. Next up, we have a $57,000 trade of ultra modern football and basketball. You have a lot of recognizable names here, such as Edwards, Stroud, um, and Jordan Love, plus $9,000 in cash all traded up for a CJ Stroud white sparkle prism in PSA 10. All right, these trades are gonna get a little more complicated as we go. This is an example of that because in this case, you got six cards being traded for one. Help me break this one down, t -Pot. This is a lot to think through. So there, you're talking about one player. Obviously there's a Stroud in the, the lot of cards and then there's one very, very big CJ Stroud in this PSA 10. That card, by the way, is a pop 10. So okay. we know the white sparkles, you know, somewhere around people, 20, 25 of People those. love the white sparkles, not, not yeah. numbered, but considered not numbered. to be one of the most yeah. premier prism short prints yeah. of any player. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks beautiful with the Texans jersey and the yeah. color match on that. So it's a big card, but this is a guy who played one season. Mm. This is a lot of risk. You're sending a lot of cards plus $9,000 $9, in, in cash over for one player based on one season, one very good season. But we've seen this before, Jeff. We've seen players, you know, not have the sophomore slump, injuries, football's wild. You got to win eventually to maintain this value. So let's talk through these other cards a little bit. First of all, an Anthony Edwards going into the season. I like that. I like Anthony Edwards right now at this point in time, heading into the NBA season. You're getting a Stroud. You're getting a Stroud Blue Sparkle. Those are new, you know, newer. They started, I think, mm -hmm. putting them into those packs. Uh, Will Levis, some people are really high on him. I don't know that I am, but uh, I, he maybe he'll have, show some flashes this year and get some hype. Anthony Richardson's obviously certainly got tons of hype, as does Jordan Love. And then I know you were very high on Paolo Boncaro going into the season. So uh, when yeah. I look at these two sides, plus the value, to me, I actually think that $9,000, I think these six cards could have arguably been enough in my mind to get the deal done just for the white sparkle Stroud. To throw $9,000 in cash, I, this one to me is, uh, I think it's pretty lopsided. I think the person who got all the cards and the cash won this trade. Yeah, from a value standpoint, if we're looking at recent sales of all these cards and everything like that, it does feel like the person who got those six cards plus the cash did a lot better in this. But the one thing I will say is that if you're a big CJ Stroud collector, if he's your guy, maybe you're a big Texans fan, maybe you were a big Ohio State fan, yeah. fan of him back in the day, if CJ Stroud's your guy, or maybe you just believe in him and you wanna go all in with him with some of the biggest cards possible, then I understand wanting that white sparkle and I understand wanting to pay a premium for it. This is a case where the person traded up. They took a lot of smaller cards, they added some cash, they traded up to get a bigger card so I get wanting that bigger card. If, let's say, we were to have swapped this out back in 2017 for a really big Mahomes card at the bottom, and then a variety of, you know, you got Alonzo Ball in there, and you know, a lot of other like, you know, 2017 rookies, maybe you got a Trubitsky, and a, you know, that type of thing, plus some cash, at the time, we probably would have said the same thing you just said, which yeah. is, well, go for the diversification. Today, you would be going, oh my God, the guy who got the one big Mahomes yeah. card killed it, yeah. killed it. So you never know what the future is gonna hold, but, but because there was $9,000, that's so much cash yeah. to put on top of this deal, the values are so out of line that those six cards plus the $9,000 is just worth a lot more on the market today. I can't get behind it. I, I think that that person who got those six cards plus the $9,000 did really well at the moment, but who knows what the future holds. It will be interesting to see down the road. To me, that cash ad says to me that the person getting the white sparkle must have wanted this either for their collection they really believe, like you said, long-term, because the highest end cards do tend to appreciate the most for the best players, or maybe they just already had a buyer lined up as like a secondary or something, but this one, this one I'm going with the, the person who got all the cards. I like your points about 2017 in Mahomes. I'm still going with the cash plus the cards. Understood. All right, guys, let's go to trade number three. Next up, we have a $38,000 trade. Uh, we have a lot of ultra-modern football here. So on one side, uh, we have a CJ Stroud Red Sparkle and a CJ Stroud Gold Sparkle, both in PSA 10 and $1,000 in cash, all traded up for Mahomes Red Power Prism in PSA 9. Very beautiful jersey uh, color match card. 
Uh, how do you guys feel about this, Jeff and Tyler? All right, Teapot, speaking of C.J. Stroud and Patrick Mahomes, we've got that right in front of us. Two big C.J. Stroud cards plus $1,000 cash for an even bigger Patrick Mahomes card. Break this down for me. Uh, good segue from our last trade yes. that we just looked at and the way you set that up. Uh, look, this red power Mahomes is on like my short list of cards that I would love to have in mm -hmm. my PC. Uh, serial numbered to 49. There's not a ton of these out there. And it's Mahomes. So you're yeah. talking about the guy who's already done all the things, and by the way, who has lost value over the last few years yeah. in spite of continuing to win Super Bowls. He's seeing some traction right now going into the season. All of a sudden, his cards are seeing 10, 15, 20% uptick. With Stroud, there's a couple of things here. We just talked about the risk of you know somebody like him, but these are also newer parallels. Mm -hmm. Gold sparkle to 24, non-numbered red sparkle. This is the continued... Uh, you know, kind of dilution of, of parallels across some of the sets like Prism and Optic and others. So these are newer parallels without lineage, without any, you know, history like that. And then on top of it, it's risk. They are getting $1,000 in cash, but in this case, I can't remove the personal emotional element from this. I would love to have that Patrick Mahomes red power, and that's the one I'm going with. Now, from a value standpoint, though, I think that's a mistake, right? Like, if we look at Maybe. recent sales yep. of these cards, the two CJ Strouds plus yep. the $1,000 cash is worth more. You could go flip those two Strouds tomorrow, and those two Strouds alone are probably going to net you a little bit more than what you would get for the Mahomes if you yep. flip the Mahomes based on recent sales. Yep. On top of that, the guy who got the two Strouds got $1,000 cash. He did. So to me, the winner comes down to what's the intention here. If these people did this trade and both of these people are planning on keeping these cards just long-term in their collection, I think the I think the Mahomes makes sense. I think the person who got the Mahomes card, I'd say they're probably the long-term winner because they got an iconic, awesome-looking color match Patrick Mahomes rookie card, very low-numbered and rare. But if the intention here is that the person who got the CJ Stroud cards is now going to turn around and flip them, resell them, or flip them for other cards, then they're the winner. Because in the short term, at this moment in time, the two CJ Strouds plus the $1,000 in cash have a decent amount of additional value on the secondary market over that Mahomes. So short term, I'm going to declare the winner the guy who got the two CJ Strouds plus a thousand bucks. All right, we'll agree to disagree on this one. We will, we will. All right, guys, and by the way, what do you think of all of these trades? Let us know in the comments who's right so far between the two of us, but we're gonna keep rolling. Time for trade four. Next up, we have a $29,000 trade. Uh, we have a Mahomes Elegance RPA in exchange for a Mahomes Select Patch Auto. Beautiful card, beautiful patch, uh, plus a vintage baseball card. All right, Teapot, we're staying with another Mahomes trade here, but this time, something unusual got thrown into this trade, a Cy Young T206 yeah. card. That is, oh, I mean, talk about different eras of card collecting. Help me break this trade down. You're no stranger to trading vintage for ultra-modern I've done it before. And vice versa. I've done it before, both ways. This is an interesting one. Uh, so let's break this down a little bit, some of the differences. This is an uh, impeccable elegance on-card auto with the with the jersey uh, you know in there and the patch kind of showing through on card auto raw mm -hmm. ungraded mm -hmm. versus a well not the greatest grade bgs seven and a half with a 10 auto it is a sticker auto that card is numbered to 49 mm -hmm. and it's got a really nice portion of the the chief's patch showing through in that little window there and then you add in a t206 cy young here yep. so when i look at that cy young in an sgc3 to me, that card, it's comping out at around $3,000, $3,500, maybe even $4,000, depending on the eye appeal. So that's a good amount of additional value, of value to get added into the trade. And then, the, you know, what I valued this select card at is closer to around $6,000. Those two cards to me, the Mahomes Impeccable with the on-card auto compared to the select with the sticker auto, not quite on the same par. And seven and a half obviously isn't a great grade. But honestly, those two cards are comping out. Just cash value regularly right around the same price. So to me, it's almost like the person just threw in the T206 Cy Young on top of this. To me, that sets this, this trade apart. I'd take the Cy Young. I'd take the Select Mahomes. Uh, and then I'd try to go get one of those red powers. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm generally with you on this. If it was just the impeccable versus the Select, I probably would go for the impeccable due to the eye appeal on that card. Yeah. Um, even though the select 
is is low numbered and selects a more known set just in general. But the impeccable is the on card auto. It's got it's got nice eye appeal for sure. So the two get, the two being equal, I'd probably go for the impeccable. But throw in the Cy Young, and to me, this becomes an easy trade. I would absolutely trade away if I had the impeccable. I would absolutely trade that away and get the select number to forty nine back, and also get that Cy Young card to add an additional few thousand dollars worth of value. To me, this is an easy one. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. All right. By the way, guys, every single trade you're seeing today, it was all done through Veriswap. Veriswap handles hundreds of thousands of dollars of trades just like these. And once again, if you haven't checked it out yet, go to veriswap.com. Use promo code SCI and you're going to get $15 free towards your first trade on Veriswap. Now, let's go to the next trade. Next up, we have a large trade up of vintage baseball cards. We have an assortment of vintage baseball plus $500 in cash for Hank Aaron rookie uh, in PSA 8. Very interesting trade. What do you guys think about this? All right, T-Ball, what a wild trade this one is. Talk about trading something big for a whole bunch of other stuff plus some cash. Help me break this one down. There's a lot going on here. First of all, admittedly, I was not uh, familiar with this 1954 Johnston Cookies uh, card. I'm not either. I didn't see that one before. Uh, So I did do a little research. 374 of those total graded by PSA. Uh, This one's pop 35, 14 higher. Anytime you can get a 50s card in this condition, you know, you're doing pretty well, PSA 8 or higher. Uh, Last sale uh, of a PSA 8 was just under 10,000 on Heritage uh, back in February. You're getting a lot of other cards here. So to me, if I'm a dealer uh, and I'm somebody who's setting up and I want to move some of these cards or I'm a volume Mm -hmm. vintage collector, which a lot of people are, set collector, that type of thing, there's a lot of different cards here, including the iconic uh, Griffey, you know, 1989 upper deck. Uh, Throw in a little bit of cash. This one to me, it stood out as pretty fair. And I think you'd agree with this. When you see single card for a bunch of cards, typically the person, uh, you know, getting the single card they're getting they're getting a lot a little more value. They're they're valuing that a little bit higher, and that's I think when you see like the five hundred dollars cash thrown in, to me that's like something very common. It's like I'll give you all these cards and you give me that one really good one, and they're like, yeah, let's throw a little cash in that to sweeten it up a little bit because I'm gonna have to do more work for these. So this one actually just strikes me as really even. I would assume that the person getting that uh, that Hank Aaron from 1954, probably a Hank Aaron collector, maybe they're even trying to go after that set themselves. So that one, I probably like that card a little bit more, but this one's pretty even. I think it just depends what you're after and what you're trying to do with these. Yeah, if we're strictly going off of recent sales of all of these cards, if you took all of those individual cards at the bottom plus the $500 in cash, that has a value of probably around $2,000 more on the secondary market than just that Hank Aaron card based upon the last time that that card sold. But as you said, that commonly happens in these scenarios. If you've got the, if you're trying to trade a bunch of small cards for one big one, be prepared that you might have to lose that trade a little bit yep. from a recent comp value in order to get the big single card that you want. Now, of course, we don't know who's behind these trades, but it's quite possible that the person who did this really wanted that Hank Aaron card. Maybe they've got a Hank Aaron collection, or maybe they just like the rarity of it. By the way, that Hank Aaron card, it's its a relatively rare card. 374 of that card have ever been graded by PSA, and that card's a PSA 8. That's a high grade of that card. Right. Pop 35 of that card in a PSA 8, only 14 higher. So you're actually talking a very high grade, a rare card, a card that you're not gonna see come up in that type of grade very often at auction. And you're you're able to give up a bunch of other cards that a lot of these cards are more common, yeah. less sought after. Some of these other cards you do see come up more often. Um, and so, you know, and, and Hank Aaron is one of the biggest names in this entire deal for sure. So I, I can understand, I can understand wanting to do that trade. I, I think that it's hard to pick a winner mm-hmm. here because even though the value, uh, from a strictly value standpoint, all the cards at the bottom plus the cash, but the but from a collectability standpoint, the Hank Aaron you know reigns supreme yeah. over all those other cards. So I'm kind of with you overall. I would assess this one as relatively yeah. fair. Yeah, I think when you think about fees too, if you have to move a bunch of different cards, yep. you probably go to an eBay or you go to you know some site, and you're gonna eat those fees. 
And then in this case, you're willing to obviously, you know, Veriswap very low fees to, to help broker these trades securely. That makes sense to me. It just makes sense that you would have about a maybe a 20% difference in yeah. value or something between the two to move into that single card. I like this trade for both sides, honestly. Yeah, it's a good one. All right, guys, we got some other really, really big trades about to come up. So let's go to the next one. So in this trade, we're not only trading across sports, but we're trading up. So on one side, you had a, have a lot of recognizable basketball players such as Anthony Davis, Trey Young, Luca, Lamelo. Uh, RPAs as well as straight up autos all traded up for one Mahomes card and I really like this Mahomes card uh, because there's the inscription patty ice which you don't see uh, super often. All right T-Bot this is a fun trade we got some of the biggest names in the sports card ho hobby over the last five years obviously Mahomes but now we've introduced Luca yep. into this trade we've got Trey Young in this trade we've got other talked about players LaMelo Ball as well uh, and Anthony Davis, help me break this one down. So you got a couple guys in here like Trey Young, like LaMelo, like Anthony Davis, who let's say they've lost some of their luster yeah. over the last few years. A couple years ago, hot ticket items. Now, including them in trades, actually kind of difficult. Actually kind of difficult to get somebody to even slow down on those cards and say, yeah, let me add this into it, the it, deal. I tell you, I can speak firsthand to that. Yeah. I have, you know, I've got a, I've got a decent sized Trey Young collection being right. here in Atlanta. And a few of my Trey Young cards I've had with me yeah at uh, the National the Fanatics Fest. Fest, recent trade, zero yeah. interest. Yeah. Even here in Atlanta, Cards HQ, when I bring those cards out for our trade night here at Cards HQ, yeah. very little interest in my Trey Young cards that I bring out. It's, it's a sad state of affairs yeah. because rewind the clock a few years ago, few years ago. and Trey Young was red blazingly hot. I, I, I feel like people feel like they've just been burnt on his card yeah. so much that it kind of has a stigma with them. He hasn't been able to yeah. make it to the next level. So I hear what you're saying. So yes, yeah. you're right. LaMelo's the same way to yeah. a lesser degree. Anthony Davis eh, maybe kind of falls in that boat. Not, not to the same, I mean, his play continues to be at a really high level when he's healthy. He's had some injury issues. Yep. But, you know, there, there's a lack of likability with Anthony Davis sometimes. And so I think that hurts him a little bit, even though he's still one of the best talents in the NBA. Yeah. But then there's Luca. Yeah. Luca's part of it too. So he's the, you know, the focal point of this, especially in terms of the value uh, associated here. A uh, couple big, relatively big cards. And, and honestly, just from a pure value, cash values perspective, pretty significant gap again here between how I would value this Mahomes, maybe in the five to $6,000 range. Um, it does have the inscription. It's serial number to 25, encased, not the most popular product and not one with an extensive lineage. It doesn't have subgrades on it. So there's some pros, some cons, it says Patty Ice. I like the inscription on it. This has to be somebody who's either just wants this card for their collection or they really believe Mahomes is gonna have a season this year like he did two years ago and basically every season before that, which is obviously possible with the weapons he's added. But this side, it's it's even more extreme to me than some of the other previous ones we've seen in that you're getting some stuff like almost like throw-ins with the Davis, with the Lamelo, with some of these others, maybe to like get the deal done. Luca's obviously the focal point. I think he's gonna have a ton of buzz again around him heading into this season, probably like more than he did over the last two years, even from a card perspective. It's hard for me to go against my guy Mahomes, but this isn't the encase cards, not one that I'd be super excited about and not liquid enough to feel like there's like price confidence going one sale to the next, I'm on the, the side of the one the, the person getting the six cards in this case. I'm on that side as well. The one argument I'll give for the Mahomes, I don't know of those of all those uh, encased um, uh, endorsement cards that, that you know, the, like the one we see here, I don't know how many have that Patty Ice inscription. Yeah. I don't know how many. It's possible that most or all of them do of that 25 card run in this case, where it's possible that very few of them do. So that's the one X sure. factor. Maybe somebody watching is actually more familiar than I am with that line of the 2017 encased and how Mahomes autographed every single card. If that Patty Ice is a really unique inscription, then it starts to make more sense to me yeah. for a big Mahomes collector to stretch value-wise to get that card because they're in love with the inscription. But if that inscription is easy to find on other cards from that set, then I'm completely with you. It's the Lucas and all of the other throw-ins all day long in terms of what, what side of this trade I'd rather want. Yeah.
Make sense? Yeah, there you go. All right, guys, let's go to the next. Next up, we have a $25,000 trade. Uh, this is a trade up consisting of a lot of ultra modern select from 2023. You see a lot of recognizable names such as Wemby and Eamon Thompson and 2.2K in cash. Uh, for a Wemby Tiger select in PSA 10. All right, Teapot, Wemby has shown up today. I thought Wemby was gonna show up, and now we've got a big Wemby trade. I will note, once again, the values of these trades that Raymond states, those are what people entered as the trade values. In some cases, we think the cash values of these cards are, are a little bit below, and that's the case with these ones, but there's a lot of intriguing cards in this trade. This is, a, this is a very intriguing trade because basically you got a really big Wemby yep. on one side, you got a lot of smaller Wembys, plus a little bit of cash, plus another card being thrown in for good measure. Break this one down for me. Uh, this one's similar in the sense of the, uh, the Stroud white sparkle, right? Like non-numbered, low pop count. This one's pop seven on the Wemby PSA 10. This is the premier level. Obviously select having four different levels. So you're gonna have tiger stripes across all four of those a lot of room for different uh, PSA 10s. But it is a, you know, it's a good looking card. People love these Tiger Stripes. I think they have pretty good staying power long-term. So this is very much a case again of like consolidating up into the bigger card, which for the best players typically have even higher price appreciation potential. You got the Prism uh, Mon uh, Monopoly Money Blast, so the, the homage to the Color Blast. You know, I don't know what the long-term potential That's the is thing. of that I'm not, card. I, I, yeah. I'm not particularly big on that. It's worth a lot today. Yeah. I mean, that card on the market today is worth a it lot, is. but but 10 it years is. from now, yeah. uh, I'm not I'm not too sold on that. Uh, Load Stars, not an insert set that has a ton of uh, history or lineage. And then on top of it, Pink Cracked Ice, not one that's super popular. The, the card that catches my eye, and it's probably the same for you, is the white color match. The white it disco. Does. Um, it does. That card actually, in a PSA 10, no sales history, but there were other ones, I think, in the concourse level and court side, as well as some other comparable ones. That one I would think is probably around $1,500 to $2,000. Getting these white color match cards, it, it was smart. I'll give Panini credit in this case to introduce the white parallels in like Prism and Select and to have these to line up with Wemby because it's a really good looking card. That's the one that stands out to me in this case. You got Amen Thompson, you got another you know, blue flash. There's a million different parallels. Value-wise, these two sides, to me, stack up pretty comparably. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I actually like the Tiger Stripe. I like consolidating into the bigger card. I think there's always gonna be people, as long as Wemby's hot over the next one to two years, who are gonna want that card and see it. They're gonna, it's a, it's a showstopper. They see it in your showcase, they go, oh, what do you need for that? What, you know, how can I get that? I'm generally with you. The one thing that gives me pause, as you said, is that white disco Wemby. I love the look of the white disco Wem Wemby, love it. That said, the Tiger Stripe for me has a similar level of appeal yeah. to most collectors. They're drawn to the Tiger Stripe. The Tiger Stripes are known to be very rare, very low population. We're seeing it with this one, only a pop seven in a PSA 10. And while in general, Select is no longer a product that I like that much. I used to love Select, you know this. We've had many talks about it on the show. I used to collect a ton of select. I love select, but now I feel like it's so watered down with all of the different levels and all of the different parallels that they that they did with this product. But even but but in this case, you're trading a big select card for a bunch of other select, select cards. cards. Yeah. And then and then a monopoly card. So it's kind of like, you know, they, you take the set out of the equation in that case. So to me, it just comes down to what's got the what's got the most you know, what's gonna be sought after the most by collectors. I agree, it's the Tiger Stripe. I would go with the Tiger Stripe in this case, even though I think it was relatively fair and I think the other side of it on this is just fine as well. But I, I'd say the Tiger Stripe being the biggest card and the one that's the lowest pop is gonna get the most attention. If I were gonna take this kind of value range, I think what would be really interesting is if somebody put together the run of the four different levels of that white card. So yeah. you had all four levels and line that up in a showcase, how nice would that look? But it would look nice. I'll go with the Tiger Stripe on this one too. There you go. By the way, if you like Tiger Stripes, we have a massive Tiger Stripe card coming up to end this show today. But right now, let's go to the next trade. For this next trade, we have a $20,000 trade down. On one side, you have a Michael Jordan auto from 2007. Very beautiful jersey color match auto. On the other side, you have a mixing of cards from different eras and sports. You have one of my favorite cards, Kobe Bryant, Dunkin' Donuts in PSA 9, a Luka NT auto, some Larry Bird cards, and a mix of football. 
What do you guys think about this one? All right, this is going to be an interesting one. Michael Jordan has entered the building, and not only has he entered, but he's entered the building with an autograph card numbered to five. Yeah. But it's being traded for some other really big cards as well. Kobe Bryant, a big time Luka, even the little Larry Bird and Barry <laughs> Sanders, your guy getting thrown into this. What do you think about this one, Teapot? If you would have just said to me, hey, without knowing the cards, Jordan Auto numbered to five for six cards of just six players, I'd be like, by default, Jordan Auto to five, give right. me that, right? But then somebody's tugging at my heartstrings here with some okay. Lions cards, with some Barry Sanders cards, like you said, Luca and Bird, you know, um, two, two of my favorite, probably, you know, top 20 favorite NBA players all time. And Kobe, throw him into the mix too with Duncan Go Nuts, one of my favorite 90s inserts ever. So I'm looking at these, kind of breaking these down. This is just a really interesting trade because you've got some cards that are worth, you know, decent money. The Luca being the biggest, it's an on card auto, um, out of National Treasures, rookie on card auto. That's kind of a three to four thousand dollar card in that range. Then you've got the Kobe, that one does about 1600 in a PSA 9. And then you've got a bunch of other smaller cards. The Barry, uh, awesome, uh, you know, a little play, fun play on words from, uh, from holographics from the 90s. That's a pop three. Wow. So tough, that's like a $10 card raw. They look really cool. It's one of those like value buys for the aesthetics. But pop three, I don't know, what is that? 100, 150, $250? I have no idea. Yeah, maybe more to the you right know, Barry Sanders collector. Not like a, a needle mover in the whole value of this package. But if I'm looking at these two, it's really difficult with the Jordan. That set, Sports Fest, was like a multi sport set. You had all these different athletes. Uh, some of them actually had dual autos. There's actually a Griffey, a Ken Griffey Jr. and Jordan auto out of this series. I honestly have no idea what to value that card at. You know the, the Jordan market a little better with autos from the 2000s better than I do. Just looking at this, purely on emotion, I'd take the six cards because I like all six okay. of these cards. But Jordan auto to five to me just says like, if you're really just saying who won the trade, I don't know how you can argue against that card. Here's the problem with that Jordan auto out of five. There's almost no sales history on it. Right. People don't know what it's worth. Mm -hmm. And it probably, whoever owns this card, probably has had a difficult time moving it or getting trade offers on it at whatever value they think it's worth. That's the problem sometimes yeah. when you get into really unique, rare cards that people don't see every day, but they're also not ones that are sought after either. Because it's, you know, there's obviously if you've got a really you know, a, a, a high-end, high, you know, low pop card that everybody wants and it rarely hits the market, but it's one that everybody's aware of, yeah. of course, that's always gonna command a super premium. But if you've got a really rare card that nobody's ever heard of, that very few people are even aware of, when it hits the market, people don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And so sometimes low pop, rare, can sometimes hold you back. Yeah in a high-end card with your values if it's an unusual one that people are not familiar with. And that's the case here with this Jordan. On face value, a Jordan auto number to five with an auto grade of 10 seems like that's gotta be a crazy card. Yeah. Five figures, maybe six figures, who knows? But in actuality, it's a weird set. It's a card that most are not familiar with and it, it's, it, it's probably difficult for people to pull the trigger on that card actually having a big time five, you know, five figure value because of that reason. All of that said, it is still Jordan in a Bulls jersey. It is still, you know, which some of the, some of the weird products, you don't get them in the Bulls jersey, yeah, right? Yeah. You get them in pajamas or sometimes yeah. in a Wizards, Wizards jersey or something, or in a North Carolina jersey. He is in a Bulls jersey. It is a 10 autograph grade. It is number to five. I would have held out for a little bit more mm -hmm. if I had that Jordan card. I don't think this trade's way off. And I think some people in the audience might say, this trade's way off. That Jordan's worth way more. Yeah. But they haven't had the experience of actually trying to move a card like right, that. Right. You know? But even with that all said, I still would rather have the Jordan in this yeah. case. And I would try to get a little more than what this person got back in return. I can't, I can't fault you for that. Like I said, I like the package of cards that were part of this and that would you know, kind of tug at me. But having the Jordan to your point, I think if you have patience, you can shop it around if you're at you know, shows and you have this, the right buyer. I actually am sure you could have gotten more value out of this. 
I just like the six cards. I could see it from both sides. I hear you. Two more trades to go. This next one is pretty wild. Next up, we have a little bit of an oddball. So on one side, we have a Star Wars triple auto, one of one. Uh, very recognizable, very beautiful card, traded down for a mix of cards. So, you know, you have a Mufasa Disney Topps Chrome, uh, you have a Kobe Patch Auto, you have a Curry Downtown, uh, and some Ronaldo Finest and Mobley Gold uh, Spectra. So, very interesting mix of sports, different types of items here. Uh, we got some Disney, got some Star Wars. What do you guys think about this one? All right, T-Bob, we've got our first non-sports trade. We've got a huge Star Wars triple auto card for some other non-sports and some sports. Man, help me help me make sense of all of this. I don't know. I don't even know where to start with this one. I, I saw this one. I was like, this is super wild. You've got a little bit of everything in here. Uh, this 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 is somebody who either collects a lot of eclectic stuff or just deals in everything, literally everything. So you've got a Cristiano Ronaldo auto. I mean, that's a good start. That's point. a great card. You've got a Kobe Bryant relic auto. Yeah, that's a good starting point. Relic relic from his warm up sure. jersey. Sure. I've, I've actually owned that card before. I picked okay. that I picked that card up. Uh, a couple years ago and then yeah. ended up trading the card yeah. away or flipping it but but yeah so not it's not yeah. the most sought after kobe yeah. relic but nonetheless it's a kobe auto with a warm-up jersey relic both of those around maybe you know 2k yep. a little, little plus or minus a couple hundred dollars then you got the steph panini one in one downtown yeah so when you talk about downtowns from basketball to mm -hmm. me this is the premium downtown. It's a nice Panini one. one and one. It's a nice one. It's a PSA nine. That's a really nice card, right around fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. Mm. Throw in the gold Evan Mobley. A lot of people still believe he has upside. That he's kind of maturing slowly. He's obviously a good defender, a decent shooter. Then you got the Mufasa. This is pop two, by the way, in a PSA ten condition. So I kind of valued that one around like four hundred bucks. And then you're talking about a triple auto, one of one. Star Wars, yep. one of the biggest IPs in the universe. Yep. Uh, and there's a card, no, that card hasn't sold. I couldn't find any sales of that card. I was trying to figure out like, what is this comp to? There was another one from 2022 Topps Chrome Star Wars Galaxy, a triple auto, and it had uh, Daisy Ridley. It was kind of from that, the, the newer crop of Star Wars movies, uh, three of those uh, autos. That one sold for $2,500. Mm -hmm. Certainly the OG, uh, one here with Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, and Ian McDermott uh, is going to sell for more than that. I think this actually scrubs up to be a pretty fair trade, value-wise, on both sides. I think the two people negotiating this did their research and came to a point where it makes sense. I don't know how to. I don't know how to make this decision. I'm not a. I'm not a particularly a fan of episodes one through three. I still. I keep trying to go back and watch them and enjoy them. Some 20, 30 years later, they're kind of hard to watch. Uh, for people who maybe grew up in that era and love those 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 uh, episodes of Star Wars, that's a big card. I think that's a big card long term. Yeah, the st the Star Wars Masterworks. That card's from Star Wars Masterworks. Yeah, Masterworks. Thank it, you. It, it, that, and that is a very high end sought after. People people romance about that 2021 Star Wars Masterworks set and some of the cards that were in that. So I'm sure this one of one has a lot has more desirability than that other you know the other one from 2022. Um, Star Wars Galaxy that sold. I, I, I imagine for the Star, you know, for the Star Wars super collector, that 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 this one of one that yeah. was part of this trade is a really big yeah. deal. It, you know, it's, it's a grail. It's I, a, I it imagine a it's grail. a grail it card. Is. I mean, it's a one of one. It's yeah. big autos. It's it's from a really good set. So I, I understand them really wanting to acquire that card, and they gave up a lot for it. I mean, they gave up a lot of other cards for it, but most of those other cards they gave up are. are yeah, relatively easily replaceable. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe not the Mufasa, but I don't know how much people care about that one as part of yeah. the deal. The bigger cards that are in the deal, like that Ronaldo, like that Kobe, even the Steph downtown, those are 100% absolutely replaceable. If the person wanted to go out and buy another one of those again, there's there's probably other copies of that of those exact cards sitting on eBay right now yeah. that they could go buy today. There's no other chance of getting that Triple Auto 101. So if you're a big Star Wars collector and that is a car that in your opinion has got a lot of value, I think that is a great trade for you if yeah. that is the case. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, all right, well we got it. We're gonna end it on one final really big trade. Let's go. Next up we have a trade down of Ultra Modern. We have personally one of my favorite LeBron cards. It's a 2020 LeBron Tiger Stripe with the uh, Kobe dunking pose in PSA 10, created down for 
1.25k in cash. Um, one of the most, perhaps the most icon iconic, recognizable basketball cards of all time, Jordan Fleer BGS8 and a pretty Pandora. I love this trade because I would love that LeBron card. I That LeBron Kobe dunk tribute card, I think that was such a great card from 2020 Prism Basketball. I, I think that's one of the one of the most iconic cards from the last five years, without a doubt. When I think about what were the most iconic cards from the ultra modern era, that is one of the first cards that comes to mind for me. And here's that Tiger Stripe. We talked about Tiger Stripe earlier from Select. This is Prism Tiger Stripe. This is a rare card. The PSA 10 population of that card is just 12. That to me is a card I would love to have, but they gave up or they gave up some really good stuff to get it. What do you think of this trade, Teapot? Well, let's do the blind thing again here. To, and if you said, I've got a LeBron card, you know how I am, you know, about LeBron. I get it, a lot of people like him. Uh, or you can have a Jordan Fleer rookie in a BGS8 condition, plus $1,250 in cash, plus a quarterback mm -hmm. who has been to a Super Bowl who has a career passer rating better than anybody through 25 games other than Patrick Mahomes so far. I go, oh, give me that for sure. So looking at these, kind of break it down a little bit more. That uh, Pandora parallel of Purdy, PSA 10, is uh, numbered to 400. It's around a six, $700 card regularly. I think Brock Purdy has completely converted me in terms of my attitude toward him. I think he's gonna have a really another really strong season. I know I can move that Jordan card with no issue at any point in time. Uh, maybe even look it over and see, does it cross to a PSA 8? Kind of go, do, go down that path. Plus, you're giving me cash, but that Jordan, or that LeBron card is special. The image is special, that, and I know anybody who likes LeBron, anybody who's a Lakers fan, is going to want that card. It's the Tiger Stripe. It's Pop 12. Very hard card to come by. One of the more iconic uh, or desirable parallels out of that that particular year of Prism. This to me is a, a, the tale of probably somebody who either just wanted to get into their first Jordan rookie or maybe even more precisely, just wanted some wiggle room to move some things around. I think the person who got the Tiger Stripe got for sure the better card in this package. Uh, I'd probably side with them. I think that card has more of like upside of an, another thousand, two thousand dollars even on the immediate horizon from where the uh, the package of other stuff here was. The Jordan rookie also, I want to point out, not well centered. Yeah, that's And true. so every eight is not equal. That's true. Generally, if you've got a lower grade Jordan rookie, or this is true really for any vintage card, if you've got a lower grade, yeah. centering is going to affect the value more than anything else. And in this case, it is not well yeah. centered. So to me, that's going to sell for the low end of the BGS eights, probably sure. the, not the high end. It will sell for the low end of whatever those are going for. So that's that's a something I didn't love about that particular copy of the Jordan either. To me, this is a super easy choice. Give me the LeBron Tiger Stripe all day long. In fact, this is the exact type of trade that I would absolutely love to do. This is the type of trade for people who watch you know, my national content and everything like that. If I can get an opportunity to trade for a rare PC card, I will happily give up cards like a Brock Purdy, Pandora, and a, a not well-centered Jordan in a BGS8. To me, that LeBron James is a PC card. It is a rare card that you don't see surface very often at all. I frankly wish that I was on Veriswap because I would have done that trade deal. I and saying, I might have even come to the table with better cards than those and more than $1,250 to get that trade deal done. I need a red Mahomes red power. You need this LeBron. We've got to wrap this up and go get on Veriswap. That's right, we got to do that. All right, guys, what did you think of our first show today of this format? Let us know in the comments. Let us know what you thought about the trades as well. And then go check out Veriswap, veriswap.com, promo code SCI for $15 off your first trade on Veriswap. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.